Good morning, Britain. I'm live at the Conservative Party conference in Manchester as the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, battles to keep his party and voters on side. He faces criticisms of being out of touch during a cost of living crisis. NHS waiting lists are at record highs and doctors are still on the picket line this morning. The Prime Minister is also accused of betraying the North and the Tories' flagship levelling up agenda with rumours he is considering scrapping the northern leg of HS2. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, joins me live now for the first live interview with you on Good Morning Britain. Oh, well, morning, Susanna. Great to be here. Well, it's, uh, it's very good to see you. We have inflation over 6%, food prices uh, still over 13% inflation. Interest rates mean that bills... Mortgages, rents, unaffordable for people, NHS waiting lists at record highs. You're one of the richest prime ministers that we've had in this country. Are you out of touch with the electorate? Well, the thing that people want from me is to make a difference to their lives. And when I first got this job, I'd set out five priorities that I was going to focus on for the country. The mm. first of those was to halve inflation. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it. 6% and a bit now. It was 11% when I became Prime Minister and okay. I said I wanted to halve it so over the course of this still year. still going up. Yeah, but it's important. And food prices oh, if, in I could, if I could just finish, that, that was the first and most important priority I set out because I know things are difficult and the biggest impact I've had on people's lives is to bring the rate of inflation down. And the good news is we're making progress. Of course I know that mm -hmm. things are tough for people right now, but I'm going to make sure that we stick to the plan. The plan is yeah. working. The last few months, as you've been reporting on your show, you started to see particularly food price inflation, but general inflation is coming down, yes, but that, that requires because, us, me, to make the right decisions okay, for the long term, which I'm may, doing, you, and, it, and it will keep coming down. But the thing is, Prime Minister, you've been Chancellor, you're now Prime Minister, inflation soared under your government, and you might be bringing it down, but that doesn't mean that prices are coming down. Prices are still going up. Yeah. Food prices, food inflation is still over 13%. I mean, it, these bills are unaffordable for people. So, we go into another winter under your premiership where elderly people in particular have to choose between eating and heating. Yeah. I, so, look, I, this is the number one priority. That's why I set it out as my number one priority too. So if you think about it, we've had, we've had a pandemic, we've had a war in Ukraine that's pushed up energy prices across Europe... And we're not alone in seeing high inflation. We're not alone in seeing interest rates that go up. That doesn't make it any easier of course for the person, it, of course it the doesn't, individual but voter who's but when facing you, but rising But I think just bills. when you were saying that when I was chancellor, inflation went up here, I think it's important for people to understand the context. When you have a war, energy prices everywhere have gone up. It's made a big difference. Mm. But that's why we've taken real action. So a typical person watching have had half their energy bill paid for by the government over these past several months. That's support worth £1,500. You talked about the winter you're for elderly you're people. withdrawing the, the £400 support. Well, that's because any... En en energy, energy bills, bills are now coming down. They've come down hundreds of pounds over the last few months. But half of their bill has been paid for by the government, because you're right, but you did make a, bills you make a really important point about elderly people in particular, mm -hmm. and I think that's absolutely right, that they're top of our mind. So this winter, for all, all those people that are watching, alongside their winter fuel payment, they will receive an extra payment of up to two or three hundred pounds on top of their winter fuel payment this winter alongside to help them with energy bills this winter. Do I agree with you? Of course our elderly people need extra help yep. when energy bills are high. So They're going to get that support let this me, winter. Let me give you an example. Um, food prices in particular, over the two years from August 2021 to August 2023, food prices rose, rose by 28.4%. It previously took over 13 years for average food prices to rise by the same amount. And a YouGov survey by the Food Foundation found that in June of this year, 17% of households in the UK were food insecure. That means they ate less or went a whole day without eating because they couldn't access or afford food. You don't understand that sort of challenge, do you? Well, I, it's because I do understand that, that people are having challenges with the cost of living that I'm taking significant action to help them. But those so if you prices talk about, have risen under your so, government, but, Prime Minister. And again, Susanna, I, I know you'd like to say that you'd like to say that's all my fault. I get that, but it's worth bearing in mind that. Well, but whose when fault had, is it? But when we've had a war. When we've had a war that means that food supplies are disrupted, Ukraine being one of the largest exporters of grain in Europe, it's had an impact everywhere in Europe. Food prices in, in the UK right now are actually lower than they are in most of Europe. That doesn't help people who are watching, though. I get that, which is why we're helping. You... So this, again, I'll just ask, again, practical help. What support are we putting in place this year for all of those people who are on welfare, 
the, the third of all households mm. that get extra support from the government, because of the actions that I took as Chancellor and as Prime Minister, they're receiving an extra £900. £900 of direct cash support this year okay. to help them with those bills. Okay. And, then you, and also, just an announcement we made yesterday at conference, we're really committed to helping those on the lowest pay see their incomes rise, which is why we made an announcement that next year the national living wage is going to rise by up to £1,000. This year it's risen by £1,400. It's going up by pennies per hour. Hang, hang on, that's £1,000 a year on top of a rise this year of £1,400 a year. You might think that's pennies. That's, that's going to make an enormous difference to 2 million of the lowest paid people. That just Demonstrate. So we're trying to do the right thing to help people on the lowest incomes okay. and make sure and make sure that they do have Tell some me. help to get through some of these difficult times. I know things are difficult with inflation, okay. but that's why yeah. the first of my five priorities was to halve inflation. Yes. We're making progress. That's the single biggest thing I can okay. do to help ease some of these burdens. A huge number of these increases do, do not even cover the fact that food prices and inflation has been so high. So that sounds like a terrific headline figure. But actually, if your energy bill has doubled, it's not even going to, to touch the surface. Let me talk to you about Bill Martin, who is an 80-year-old retired man who lives in a mobile home 10 miles outside of Glasgow with his wife and his dog. Now, in the summer, his dog needed significant surgery. That meant that his pet insurance increased from £28 a month to £55 a month. He has a pension of £194 a week, but received no additional help from the government. His food bill has risen from £160 in May to £210 in September. And he has given his, us his shopping bill, where each of the items has increased. For instance, meat pies increased from a pound to three pounds. He has considered going to a food bank. What choice should Bill Martin make? Should he go to a food bank or should he get rid of his dog? No, look, it's obviously very sad to hear about Bill's situation. And it's hard for me, without going through all exactly his circumstances, to figure out the best way to help him. I don't want to see anyone have to go to a food bank. I'm grateful to everyone who operates them because they do provide support for people. But what I could tell you, so for example, a single mother who's working full time on the national I'm living not, sorry, wage. Sorry, no, I'm but, not but talking you're talking about, about, about one I'm, I'm asking about the choice. These are the day to day choices. So, Susanna, I'm that giving individuals you, are making. And, I'm, and, and I'm, I'm specifically, you, I'm not talking about your example. I'm talking about the example that but, we but, have. Okay. Bill Martin, but I can also old. give and you I'm an saying, example. Do you of, want an 80 year old retired man of course, of course to go to a food bank? Of course Or do you want him to think that he can no longer afford his dog? So, again, you without me sitting down and talking to Bill, but what I can tell you is for all those who are pensioners, mm. because of the triple lock, they've seen an £800 increase in their pensions this year. As we were talking earlier on, they're going to get an extra potentially £300 this winter alongside their winter fuel payment. I could talk to you about a single mother who's working mm. full-time on the national living wage with kids who who is getting help from the government this year worth an extra £1,300. Okay. Right? And I could go through case study with you after case study because I've gone through it and made sure that the most vulnerable in our society yep. are getting extra well, help. let me tell and you what Bill did. that is making a difference. Look, do I get yep. that things are tough? Of yep. course they are. But the best way for me to help Bill yeah. and for everyone else is to stick to our plan to bring inflation down. You've gone through rightly and listed all the yep. bills that Let are going up. So the best way to help all these people is to bring inflation do you know what down Bill ended up and doing? making sure that we do he all went the decisions. To a food bank. Well, and, and well, the most important thing is for us to be able to help people like Bill, not just today, but for years to come. The way for me to do that is to bring inflation okay. down. Now that's not an abstract One thing. Of the or you other... brought to life, I think, actually brilliantly. When I talk about inflation. That's not some economic concept. It's inflation that's making Bill's life tough. Yes. So when I say my first priority is to halve inflation, that is the thing that's going to make a difference. Yep. That requires me to make lots and of Bill difficult still decisions. Bill faces 6% inflation, prices still rising, and food prices oh. at 13% inflation. It, you are absolutely right to say, what are you doing to help Bill? And as you would with anyone else on mm. your show, your number one question should be, doing, should be, what are you doing to help bring inflation down? It's yeah. inflation that's making everyone's watching's life difficult. Yes. Right? What is the government doing to bring inflation down. That's why we're responsible with people's borrowing. That's why we're responsible with making sure that we help the inflation most vulnerable. Inflation that's, that's sold. how we bring it down. The other thing you're trying to you're, bring you're down, right. the you're other right. thing you're trying to bring down, waiting lists. Waiting lists now, 7.68 million people waiting to start treatment at the end of July. The highest number since records began. 
The NHS is broken under your watch, isn't it? No, I absolutely don't think that's right. I come from an NHS family. My dad was a GP, my mum okay. was a pharmacist. S almost 7.7 so, .7 million well, I think everyone watching will know that we've had a pandemic, which is why waiting lists yeah. are also at a record high. 4.5 in... million people yeah. before the pandemic. Well, you're talking about under my watch, so let's just talk about it. Waiting lists also at a record high in you Wales. You were part of the government, by in the way, Scotland. before right. the pandemic. So everyone is having a tough time with waiting lists. But look, I can tell you, we are making progress on the longest waiters. We've put record funding into the NHS weeks after I became Prime Minister, billions of pounds. Ambulance waiting times have come down considerably. I remember when I first became Prime Minister, you'll remember, you reported on it a lot. It was taking people an hour and a half to get an ambulance. We brought that right down. Shocking. But when it, it comes to waiting shocking. lists... Look, I was I tell afraid you the to call an ambulance. But I was, uh, but can we're I, not can talking I, about waiting times, we're talking let's, about waiting lists. So can I can treatment. I address that? Can I address that? Yes. Because you right, you talked about people like Bill. You talked about people yep. struggling with their food bills. So the reason that waiting lists are going up is because we've got industrial action. Because doctors are on strike. Now I've sat down and tried to do no, the reasonable that thing. That might be one of the reasons. That is the number one reason. That, but if I could just finish, if I could just finish, it's really that important. That is not the number one yeah, reason. Yes, it there is. was already no, no, a, a backlog. No, no, no. Sorry, before the back, before the, back, the pandemic, it was four and a half million. Uh, but if you look at what was happening to it, we were actually we had stabilised it. it had stopped going up and it was forecast to start coming down until industrial action started. That's the, that's the reality of it. Now look, these are the facts. So you've talked about bills, you've talked mm -hmm. about people struggling with their food bills. What have I done? I've negotiated sensible deals with the entirety of our public sector, including our nurses, including our hospital porters. Mm. The group of people that are still on strike are our doctors. Yeah. Now, that, no, In no, Scotland, that, they fixed it well, with a 12% increase. Right, so you're talking about how do we help Bill? How do we help people on the lowest incomes? The independent mm. body the independent body recommended to the government that the doctors be given a 9% pay increase. Okay. That's more than Bill's probably getting. By the way, that's more than the nurses the and the hospital strike, porters are the getting. The doctor's strike but has Susanna, likely cost really... the NHS over £1 billion so, Susanna, and the this BMA is really said important. you could have fixed no, the doctor's but, strike but, with that money. No, no. You're just no, no. wasting money no, during absolutely not. this industrial so, action. Susanna, you spent the first part of this interview talking to me rightly about people on the lowest incomes, yes. the most vulnerable. Yes. And now you're sitting here saying it's right that doctors, yeah. who are some of the highest who paid going people to treat in the NHS, on waiting getting lists. paid more than the nurses, a mm -hmm. pay settlement recommended by an independent body, not me, mm -hmm. higher than anyone else in the public sector, are going on strike okay. after we've put we... record funding into the NHS. I don't think that's reasonable. Okay. I don't think that's fair. Do you think it's reasonable and fair, finally, before I let you go, that you have a party conference in Manchester and you're basically telling Manchester you're going to cancel the HS2 link? No, look, that's, that's not... <laughs> We're having a good conference in Manchester, and what we just announced, actually, at this conference is a billion pounds for 55 towns across the country, in Are the Midlands and the HS2? North, including in the area around here, putting local people in charge of all of their high streets, their town centres, mm. their security. That's showing that we're backing communities across the North. Many of your viewers will know that. Hang Are on. you cancelling it, HS2? No, I'm not going to comment into all that speculation. Is that, but was I that a no, I'm not cancelling? I'm not going to comment on the speculation. They're but straight I will talkers say, up here in Manchester. Yeah, they what, want a straight answer. And what answer. they'll see from me, as I did with Net Zero, is I take the time to get a decision right for the country. And on Net Zero, I made a decision that's going to save your viewers five, ten, fifteen thousand pounds I took the right this long-term decision for the country. And yes, lots of people criticised me for it, but I wanted your, your viewers not to have to rip out their boilers, install heat pumps, change cars. I thought that was the right thing to do. I approach all these problems in the same way. I will make the right long-term decision for the country. And when will you make it? When we've gone through it properly. That's how I approach these things. You saw that on Net Zero. I want to save people money. We can meet all our targets. We still have world-leading okay. targets. I'm not sure how we pivoted from HS2 to because what you've about, done on Net Zero. Because it's about decision-making. And yeah. actually, I'm glad you asked, actually, because yeah. it's about I'm glad I asked as well, because making. actually, if people don't get the train, they're going to be getting in their cars, which is not going to help you on net zero well, targets, it's, well what it? I don't want to do is saddle people with five, ten, fifteen thousand pounds of extra cost. We're going to meet all our net zero targets. We're going to do it in a more sensible way. Yeah, but That's you're my not going to answer decision. on HS2. No, but I'm absolutely committed to levelling up. And our announcement, as I said, this week at conference, more people are watching the show probably live in towns and live in cities. Okay. They don't get the all attention right. they deserve from Westminster. We're backing them with a billion pounds of long-term funding. And we'll funding. let them judge. And put, yes, and I'm looking forward to visiting them in their towns, how they're going to spend this money to improve their communities. We'll That's what we're doing judge. for people in the Midlands if and the North. you've given straight answers to straight questions this morning, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Thank you very much Thank for having very me. very much indeed. And we will discuss what the Prime Minister said. You can get in touch, of course, as well and give us your verdict. Andrew Pearce and Kevin Maguire will be here shortly.